Um, is how you envisioned the, envisioned the piece, how we played it, or were there differences? <coughs> well, there were differences because I think <coughs> pieces grow while you're writing them. So I start out in one place, and then it evolved, and I heard you, and I made some changes. Remember, I you got a new set of parts at one point. Um, so, and I actually will probably make a few changes since the performance as well. Not having to do with your performance, but having to do with what I wanted to do. So I think it's pretty close. The more you, the more you compose, the closer you get to this is what I'm hearing in my mind, and this is what's actually going to happen. That's just something that comes with experience. So pretty close. Much better than I could ever imagine. Um, when, you, when you were like first trying to come up with an idea for the piece, did this just hit you all of a sudden, or did you kind of like build on it? Kind of like really think about it. I had different ideas, different uh, different fragments, and I always carry with me a piece of paper and pencil everywhere. And I can be on the train, on an airplane, anywhere, and I will literally on a bike ride and pull out my phone and sing something. You know, I constantly am gathering those ideas, and then I sometimes will f come up with a structure of how those ideas fit together. Uh, I also had a great meeting with. Uh, Mr. Van Ness about uh, different things that I should consider when writing this for you and for this particular band because I wrote this really for you. Anytime I've received a commission I like to listen to the people that I'm writing for and really structure the piece for them which is a really something that happens all through music history right all those concertos were written for actual people. How did you get into music? How did I get into music? Well, it was all around in my house. I didn't have any um, professional musicians necessarily in my house, but um, we, we loved music, and my mother insisted that we all learn to play an instrument, so I, I had to take piano lessons, and um, I really loved that, though. And so, and then later in high school, I studied voice, and um, I didn't get into composing really until I was in college. What's your favorite instrument to compose for? Gosh, middle school band. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, I write a lot for voice because that is my instrument. So I particularly like writing for voice. Um, I love writing for percussion as well. Um, I, I, I think I haven't met an instrument I haven't. Get to, I get to love them as I write for them. What was your first piece? Well, I wrote a wind quintet. It was just sort of an exercise. I think I think probably it was a piece for viola and piano. Commission. Yes. Um, is there someone or something that inspired you to become a composer? I was surrounded by a lot of composers, and I was performing new music. Um, so I really highly recommend you yourself in uh, situations where you're working with composers because uh, it's really a wonderful thing to experience bringing as you know a piece to life uh, so I've had a lot of I was in a kind of community of composers and um, part of what happened was I, I would be working on pieces or I'd be hearing new pieces and you know the piece would take this turn and I think to myself I really wish the piece had done that instead you know so <laughs> you start rewriting a piece in your head, and so I think that that, just the energy of being around writing led me to writing. Oh, this is hard to choose. Yes. Um, what inspired you to write this piece? This piece? Well, I wanted to write something that was about Hudson Valley and about Red Hook, and so I wanted to capture something that expressed how I feel about it and the beauty, and I also felt like the hawk was kind of spirit animal of a middle schooler in a way. So I think there's a lot of qualities in the hawk that a lot of people possess. What made you decide you were going to make our own wind transfers and have you ever seen a band do that before? I have seen a lot of percussionists build instruments. In fact, it's something that a lot of them make a part of what they enjoy doing in, in percussion. Um, I wrote a piece for uh, the New York Philharmonic that was for percussion and soprano and orchestra, and the percussionist had drums built 
particularly for it. And he actually had um, a wind chime, incredible wind chime, like 10 times the size of the ones I've um, built for the piece. Uh, so so I, I had seen that come together. And also, you didn't have a lot of wind chimes. You had the, the mark chimes. And I thought, well, here's an idea. They need wind chimes. I'll make them a set. And then we do another. And another. <laughs> So as you said before, this piece kind of represents like a hawk and stuff. Yeah. What elements of the piece do you find represent that hawk element with those values? The part when the groove comes in, there is there's a kind of sitting back and a, a, a kind of cool, you know, that I to me is like when the hawks are up there and they're just sort of riding the air and they're I think I said to you they own the sky, you know, there's this there's this attitude of of patience and waiting. Um, and so that was one thing. And then the aggression. There's a lot of aggression in the percussion and the gestures of that. And that was something that I felt was very hawk-like. So the gestural aspects, too. What, what, made, what made you think? Is there anything that any of you felt was hawk-like in the piece? Mm -hmm. um, no, I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that like there's sometimes you know, there's a lot of like you know kind of sudden cutoffs and stuff. Um, and you know, various kind of small visual um, things that happen. I felt that was kind of like a hawk because, you know, hawks, they're kind of like chilling in the trees and they go and hunt and then they kill something and then it's like, they immediately stop moving. Yeah, so a lot of that actual movement. Also the piccolo has a kind of hawk cry in there, some of those, those leaps, right? That was the voice of the hawk, as close to the eye. Um, what's your favorite piece that you've like <laughs> um, that's, I, I don't, they're all different, sort of apples and oranges, you know, so I think I like them all in different ways, which is what makes um, sense. What caused you to make a piece, I get like the hawk like of it, but uh -huh. to make it go from really smooth and then all of a sudden extremely like intense and really Somewhat <laughs> um, and like a fast paced, like fortissimo, and really loud, and then it comes down to like a mezzo forte. So, well, it, did something inspire you besides the hawk? I mean, Red Hook and Rose Valley. I think you know, a lot of times in my music, I feel like it's a it's a journey that you're going through. It's, an, it's like different events that are happening. It's an experience, right? So, when you come from the beginning of the piece to the end of the piece different things have happened, and um, I think there's something, uh, well, I don't know, that's something that's just sort of an intuitive idea of how, how it should change. I know I wanted to give you a sense of variety of things. I really didn't mean for it to be extreme. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you all rose to the occasion. What was your favorite part of By the Hall? Like, what part moved you the most? You know, I really like the ending. Um, that I think that sort of, again, sometimes when you're writing a piece, at a certain point, the piece tells you what is going to happen. So you can have all these plans and all these things, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, this is the strike, and then all of a sudden the piece will just do its own thing. And that ending really was the piece just, just wanted to go there. And the individual voices and the kind of overlap of the groove with those individual voices, um, I, I felt like that brought a lot of the different things together. And then adding in the aleatoric on those completely weird notes and things on top of that, too. Uh, I like that. Oh. Oh. Um, well, as you were saying before, like the wibbly wobbly, I don't know what you call them when you move your fingers at the different, to the different notes. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to do that? Because it's something that I've really never seen in music before. Well, it's, it's not a technique that I came up with. It's, um, it's called, if something is improvised like that, it's called aleatoric is the word for it. Um, but it's within a structure, right? So it's within this measure, or the conductor's going to, going to have this time, this fermata. And within that, you're going to do this. So it's like a structured improvisation. And it's something that different composers, um, I've seen through different composers. I also have a background in jazz. And so I have a great love of jazz and improvised music. 
Um, so I, I had experienced that in, in that language. Also different um, composers that I had, that I had studied, I've, I've seen that as a composer named Ludoslavsky, a Polish composer who completely changed my life. Um, so there's a lot of different, different wonderful composers out there who use all kinds of incredible techniques. You said that uh, like this piece kind of represents both the hawk and uh, the Hudson Valley. Um, is there a reason why you chose those, those both to be represented within the same piece? Well, because it was for you, and I wanted you to connect to it. So I wanted it to be something that was sort of of this place. Um, I think it's really important that you know we are present and we connect to the music that we're playing. And so I wanted to, to that was one reason. Um, I had, we had, my family, we actually rescued a hawk when we first moved here. So that was kind of something that resonated with me. It was released in our backyard. It was rehabilitated and released. That's really cool. um, does that It depends on the piece, and boy, there's no normal. Um, I think also because life isn't necessarily normal. <laughs> so, you know, in a perfect world, I would have, you know, a whole day where I did nothing but compose, but I have other things in life that I do too. So, um, yeah, so it really depends. But I think I, I started this piece in the fall, had sketches and different ideas. Um, Again, it wasn't like I was doing it 24-7, so every piece is different. I could do it, I could do it all the time, I wish I could do it. Awesome. Um, Thank you. 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 Thank you.